I've got a, a quick project today. Actually, this is a, one of my jobs at work is to cut out circuit boards for our ShopBot team that makes desktop tools. They need these for the limit switches that are applied to the desktop and allow you to home the tool out. They consist of little switches that uh, are pressed down when the tool uh, finds its own position that are soldered onto circuit boards with connectors. And so you know, these are just glued onto the side of a tool and during the homing routine the bearing blocks in the tool depress the button and that's how you always find the same home position. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a jig that I can use to hold these circuit board blanks. They're six inch by four inch blanks and I'm going to cut the jig out of a piece of plywood. So I go ahead and make my six by four rectangle and center it in the middle of the area. I'm actually going to draw a couple of arcs using the three point arc tool. I don't want to have to fit the board exactly into this jig. You know, it's going to be tight and any little bit of dust is going to make it impossible to fit. So what I'm going to do is actually relieve a lot of the sides so that only the corners are being held by my jig. I clicked on the corners of the rectangle to make these and then I mirrored them uh, and moved them over to the other side. When you make copies like this you can grab the new shape by the end point of the line and then drag that end point over to the corner of another shape to set it in place. What I'm doing now is just scaling the length of each of these arc segments so that I have a little bit left over, about a, an inch left over at the corners that will still be exactly the size of the board. Uh, with the trimming tool, I can trim away the excess straight, uh, straight vectors and then just go ahead and join them all together into one continuous vector shape. Of course, the tool can't cut sharp corners because it's a round bit, so I'm going to create some dog bone fillets at the corners. Um, that'll be the diameter of my quarter inch bit, and that'll allow me to fit the sharp corners of the board in there without um, getting stuck. Uh, and last, I guess I'll add a little finger hole that'll allow me, you know, I'll cut that a little bit deeper than the circuit board pocket, and it'll allow me to pop my finger in there and pull the board out when it's done cutting. So the boards are about, um, I'm going to guess, you know, a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch thick. So I'll cut this pocket to be about uh, 0.05 inches deep, which is a little bit less, a little bit more shallow than the sixteenth of an inch, just so I can make sure that I press everything down well. And then I'll cut this uh, finger pocket down by about a quarter of an inch, and that'll give me plenty of room to fit my finger in there and pry the boards out when they're done cutting. Uh, so for both of these I've chosen a quarter inch bit and that'll allow me to do the whole thing without having to change bits at all. Now someone else actually designed these circuit boards and I received a vector file from them with the designs that they wanted cut out. So mainly they consist of um, first a very shallow pocket that creates the wire traces for the boards and then um, a cutout and some holes. So what I did here was I grouped the boards together and um, then selected the outline of the jig that I created and using the alignment tool I positioned those circuit boards exactly in the center of the jig so I know that they'll all be on the area of the circuit board blank that I'm going to be using to cut this out. Um, I decided to use a 16th inch end mill for all of this. Um, it will preserve a good amount of the detail. Uh, I won't get exactly sharp corners, but it'll be good enough for the design and function of the boards. And it'll be a bit faster than using a V-bit or a really or using a really small end mill to cut out this design. So uh, I have already put tabs on all of the parts so that when they get cut out they'll be all held on the same piece of circuit board blank and when I turn these over to the electronics assembly people they can just cut them out with a pair of wire cutters or just pop them out and solder their parts to them. 
So just previewing the cut here, everything's looking good, so I'll save this one out um, as a shop bot part file or a cut file uh, and call it circuit boards. And then also I need to save out the cut for the jig and I'll just call that circuit board jig or circuit board pockets I guess. So with these two things saved I can go ahead and start setting up my handy bot. Um, I've got it already turned on connected to it in uh, access point mode and I'm going to run the XYZ0 routine. Normally I just sort of cut wherever, but in this case, since I'm going to be repeating the same cut over and over again, I want to start from like a home origin point, so that, that way if something happens, if I break a bit, or if I the tool you know, loses a step or moves, that I can rehome it and get lined up with my jig again. So I've got a longer bit in here that I was using for some work last weekend and what I really want to use for this is a down cut bit because I'm going to be cutting in plywood um, the up flute bit will actually cause a lot of burrs and uh, bad cut quality as it pulls up the veneer of the plywood uh, I don't have a down cut bit at home with me but I do have a straight bit which is kind of like a standard uh, quarter inch router bit with just one straight cutting flute on it and that'll be good enough, and it hopefully won't tear up the plywood too bad. Um, so, yeah, you can see there it's just sort of a carbide-tipped um, straight-edged cutter. So I uh, locked this in with my, with my collet wrench, and then now that I've got the tool homed, I can just drop it in there until the bit actually touches the wood, and then I'll call that my zero point, rather than having to zero it off of the... Um, Z0 plate. So I just go right over to Fabmo and uh, click the orange zero button next to the Z, and that'll set my bit to my bit depth to zero. So I'm uh, ready to cut out the pocket first. So I'm going to go ahead and select from the job manager circuit board pocket and my little Henry vacuum cleaner. I like him a lot because it's uh, really quiet and you know, it's kind of hot outside right now. So I really would rather work inside. Uh, you know, with the, the the low power vacuum and the router turned down, it's not really not too loud to have inside. So um, it's just pocketing from the outside in for my jig pocket. You can see a little bit of tear up on the edge of the plywood, but nothing too bad. And the finish looks pretty good on the um, base of the pocket, which is really the main important thing. That's part of why I added those arcs, so that even if the edge quality wasn't that great on the jig, I would still be able to get my circuit boards in and out without having to clean it up too much with sandpaper or anything. So um, as it's going, you can watch the, the feed values on FADMO moving around just to sort of get an idea of where your tool is. Um, pocketing out the little finger hole right now. Uh, the vacuum is doing a pretty good job of getting up all that dust, uh, especially with fine particles like wood, uh, MDF, and even the circuit board material. It uh, really does a good job of picking up a lot of those a lot of those dust particles. So to hold my circuit boards in, they they'll fit pretty tightly in the jig, but I like to have a little bit of extra reinforcement so that it doesn't pull up when it's cutting in the middle. And I just use uh, carpet tape, so it's just sort of a double-sided, uh, pretty sticky tape. And I'll uh, you know keep it covered until I'm right about to use it because it will accumulate dust and not stick as well. So just peel off the backing, and then you'll be able to press it into place in the jig, and it will it'll hold for you know at least the duration of the cut. Uh, I haven't left it overnight or anything, but it, it'll hold for a good while. So you can see that the jig's pretty tight. I have to kind of press pretty hard on it to get the corners to pop in kind of push down the middle a little bit to make sure that it's seated well. So I've uh, recently been starting to do a lot more electronics carving with the HandyBot, so I felt the need to find a way to hold these really small engraving bits. So I found a, a vendor online that supplies um, sort of supplementary collets to a DeWalt router, and, and they make, you know, 8th inch shank collets like this one right here. Um, that I can use to hold 16th, 32nd, or even 164th bits. Um, and I kind of put them all together into a little package 
of uh, bit holders that stamps onto the back of the handy bot. You can carry it around with you. So I just uh, have to not only replace the bit, but the entire collet here. So putting the 8th inch collet onto my handy bot, of course holding the little yellow button to lock the spindle. And um, you know you want to get that bit pretty deep in there so that it doesn't have a lot of room to flex when you're cutting out something like the circuit board. And now I make a mistake here, which uh, it won't cost me right away, but I'll realize it later on. I, I was so excited to get on with the project that I, I tightened the bit by hand and I forgot to use my wrench. So uh, we'll see what happens later because of that. So to zero this one I wanted to get really exact and I'm just stepping it down slowly in Fabmo uh, until it catches this piece of paper underneath the tool and then zeroing the z-axis at that exact point. Now all ready to start up. Um, the you can see there that the eight, the eight inch collet is pretty stable and holds that bit pretty securely and there's not a lot of uh, run out so you actually get some pretty precise designs and especially in these shallow cuts you can move really fast so you know this um, this toolpath makes enough parts for eight desktop shopbot tools and takes about seven minutes to run so I'm going to try to get about 64 or I guess eight full sheets done today. That'll be 64 tools, which will last uh, the guys at shop out about a you know, couple months, hopefully, maybe maybe three months, and uh, that'll you know get me off the hook from having to make too many more of these for a while. So you can see there the tool lifting up to leave the tabs in place for the um, circuit board cutouts. Um, so far, so good. Uh, everything's staying in place. Everything cut out successfully. So um, now I can just pull this up and take a look and make sure that everything cut through. It looks like it did though, so we're in good shape. And if it didn't, I can just run the tool bath again with the uh, Z step down a little bit to make sure that I cut all the way through. So now as I go into full production, you saw that first one, I only got halfway through. What happened was I had uh, the bit slipped out and was pulled down into the material and actually got pulled about half an inch into the wood and j bound up the handy bot. Didn't break the bit, fortunately, but uh, I realized my mistake when I was watching this video uh, that I didn't actually tighten it down with a wrench. So, um, all of my stuff is done and uh, have a lot of parts ready for Monday to give to the guys at work.